Hi, welcome back to Discovering an Educated Life. This is Megan, and today I'm gonna be walking you through um, just a review of HBLB with sunlight. And I'm just gonna talk to you about how we did that, what it looked like, and what we used of it. We did about half a year of it, and there's a good chance we may use more of it going forward, or at least um, at some point transition back to sunlight. And I just wanted to talk to you about what we liked about it and how we implemented it and how it worked for us. So I shared this guide with you in another video where I was showing you how I used it instead of using um, a, just a regular homeschool planner. So today I wanted to walk you through and just kind of show you the books and what we actually used for this because it's hard to see on the surface level what this actually looks like. So when you're looking at Leading Little Ones to God, that's this book here. And so when you buy a Sunlight Core, if you buy it from them, you get these tabs or you can just purchase them. Um, right from sunlight they're only a couple bucks and that helps me um keep track on my shelf of which books go to what core so this book is super simple it's a little old school but it was a really good book so i'm just opening to a random page and you'll see this would be like lesson five which is probably a couple weeks into the school year there's a lesson and at the end it's going to have something to talk about with questions a memory verse um it's going to have this is the memory verse here, um, some suggested reading, and then there's usually a hymn and a prayer, and we just kind of made that our own. We didn't necessarily pray exactly what this said, but we would um, just kind of make that our own thing. And then there was always some more context in here. So when you're looking through, it would have just a little bit more information usually explaining to you um, what you were doing that week. For you as the mom so you see i have other books all scattered around here because i'm trying to kind of walk through this so obviously we just used our regular bible for these readings um i actually you had my daughter just use um she has an niv and she just used that last year and i did the reading and she followed along because we both have an niv so we did that um, together, but I read and she just followed along. And then we worked on our memorization and we had um, the CD I think I mentioned. I actually just put that on the shelf and then I had the iTunes version on my phone. So that made it much simpler. So it was so easy to just get through that. So it's just your devotional, your reading, and then I would pull out my phone and listen to our track for... Track one was the one we were working on to memorize Psalm 1. This was just lessons in here, and so I'm not going to go over all that because that's their specific lessons. And you can actually pull up Sunlight's um, samples right from their website, and I will link that below, and they will give you a three-week sample so you can read more of that information if you're interested. This book here is this, The Wonderful Houses Around the World by Yoshio Komatsu. Um, this book is really a nice cultural book. And so it'll have something like this. This is like a yurt. And then it had an actual picture. This is Mongolia. And we looked up on a map and we would just do that for every reading we had. There's is a really I'm just trying to kind of flip through and show you the pages of the book. And we made it through all of this. And we used that book for some cultural um, studies last year. Then, um, so that's all that was scheduled here. Now, I want to show you, because it's hard to see from that, what other books were used. Um, it's kind of really hard to see, like, okay, so you use this book, and we're learning about culture, and you can read what they had scheduled for you to do here, but it's kind of hard to get the context of, like, what does the rest of the year look like? So this is not even everything, but this is just what we actually used for our second grade year. So this is Archaeologists Dig for Clues. Um, this came with it, and we actually did this before we dug into the history. So we started with some cultural learning, and then we moved on to some 
uh, learning about what archaeologists do and like what history is, which was really cool. And then we started digging into these books and we really covered like Egypt and Mesopotamia, um, just a lot of the ancient cultures in that area. So this is a pretty thick book. This is a child's history of the world. It's from Calvert School. This version, the, the Calvert Education, it's by Virgil Hillier. And I just want to flip through some of it and show you. So there's a lot of context. We did not finish this book, but this um, would be get you. This would be used um, throughout cores B and C. So core B is world history. You're one of two. And so you would use a child's history of the world for core B because you would do about half of it. Well, so we only did about a quarter of this book because we pretty much only got through most of like the ancient Mesopotamia, Babylon, Babylonia. Um, we learned about the ancient um, Minoans on the island of Crete and we learned about um, Egypt and a lot of things we had just started on Greece so Egypt is a really long unit because there's so much history that we do know about Egypt but if we would have continued finishing Corby we would have gotten through um, at least Greek history Roman history and also some ancient China so we will um, eventually touch back on these topics and there's a good chance it's going to be in the near future. So we did about a quarter of this book and the same goes for this. We, the Time Traveler book is a really neat Osborne book where you visit different time periods. So it has knights and castles, Viking raiders, Roman Romans, and pharaohs and pyramids. We did all of the pharaohs and pyramids. So I'm just going to kind of flip back here and show you. Not all of it, but some of what that is. This is going to school, visiting a temple, um, a feast. So this is like pretending you're a time traveler and you are traveling to different time periods. And then at the end of each time period, there's like a little quiz. And so we did this one. Um all of the Egypt portion of it. So we covered all of Egypt last year using this. And my daughter really likes this book. Then we did world history again, about a quarter of this. So we just, this is one of those ones that's just a chronological book. And all of these three I showed you, A Child's History of the World, The Time Traveler, and this Osborne Book of World History would be used over course B and C because you, or HBO, B and C, because you would be using them over a time span um, of two years to cover all of world history. And so we read this in the beginning. We're learning about archaeology. There's more of it in here that we read. And they, they did a really good job of um, just tying this in. So when it would have, um, for instance, we did the archaeologist dig for clues they had the reading scheduled when we were digging up history so it was just they did a really good job of scheduling that for me and it was super easy for me to just pick it up and go so I wanted to show you it has these little things where it'll have a little project we did a lot of these um this specific one I have the Melissa and Doug loom and we just pulled that out and did um loom work just for fun uh, anytime there was like little suggestions like that in here, I would just do something fun and hands-on and it was really super natural and it didn't feel like it was like forced or we have to check this box today. It just naturally came to us like, oh, we have this we could use. Well, there's a craft set sitting there we could do and it didn't feel like something I had to do a ton of planning for. Um, there wasn't a ton of projects planned but it worked really well. So the only other book for actual history that we used is this one. Um, my daughter read that herself. It was Tut's Mummy Lost and Found. Now I do know there's a couple more history books. I know one on the ancient, um, the Great Wall of China and a couple things like that that we didn't get to last year, but these are the ones we did cover for second grade. This one, it was her reading level so I had her read this one aloud to me when it was scheduled and she learned a lot about King Tut and when they found him 
And um, again, because we covered so much ancient history, we did so much Egypt. We were really burnt out on Egypt. It was a good year. I'll tell you that. We really learned so much about Egypt. So retention wise, it was really good. But we were just kind of burned out on Egypt and we were really ready for a change. And so it'll be a refreshing change when we go back to this to be in Greece and not <laughs> in Egypt still. So we had Around the World with Kate and Mac. Um, this book is really good. And it's like a cultural book to me more than a history. Well, it is for sure. It could just as well be um, considered Bible. And so it's a look at languages from A to Z. I'm just literally going to open to a random language here. So, I had, I'm trying to see, like, all right. So, Dakaka, and it's the island of Vanuatu. Um, it's been a while since we did these. I know I did have to look the words up and the languages up for most of these, but... Um, when we did Kate and Mac, they had a really neat um, song that goes with it. I looked up, I found it um, on Pinterest, and they have a website. It's Wyclef Bible Ministries we were able to use. So I didn't need to close that. Um, and so there would be information about it. And we would listen to the song from the Wyclef website. And see, that was it. So we would usually do this on Monday every week once we got into the year. Oh, there would be... A lot of times like a flag it would just be some information about where it was located we would look that up and that was I mean there wasn't a whole lot to this book very age-appropriate introduction to like um, Bible translation and different cultures and so what we would do is there were activities on the Wyclef website and we would print those off sometimes or sometimes there would be recipes or things to make or something that correlated really well. And again, none of that is necessarily scheduled with sunlight, but that is what I loved about it is that I could do that as an addition for my daughter and it didn't have to be something that was scheduled and we didn't have to do all of them because I didn't feel like I had to because it wasn't scheduled. I could easily pick this up and get on the website and find something for that week. And if it was a busy week and all we did was read, that was also fine. So we would listen to the song every Monday before we did it. And we would read about the new culture. A lot of times I had to look up the words because some of the languages were hard to say. Um, and then we would discuss and maybe make a craft or make some food or something like that. So that was another really good resource that came with it. Now, both of these books I purchased from Sunlight separately. This is just a Dover coloring book. And so if there was something we were learning about, I would just have her color the pages. So we didn't have a lot um, when it came to um, like history assignments. But that was really, I mean, she really enjoyed it. And I feel like she was really learning history. And for second grade, I was fine if we were just coloring pictures most of the time or doing little fun stuff. So this um, Around the World coloring book, again, she just colored. This is China. Um, she Actually, I think she might have already colored that because this one I did buy from Sunlight, but a different year. So was, I think that one may have even been from first grade. But when she would learn about a new culture... I would just have her sometimes color in um, the flag and just kind of read it. And we would talk about the culture. And a lot of times that correlated with the Kate and Mac or just something like we did Egypt when we were learning about Egypt. So both of those were really nice. Now, another thing we had was hands-on history. And this is something from Sunlight. And I did not pull out or did pull out the giant box. I lied. So it comes with this giant, I will show you this first. I don't want to jump around everywhere. So it has um, all these projects for you to do in here that correlate and they schedule and tell you when to do them. And they correlate with the lessons and the IG. So I will show you what that kit looks like real Okay, so we've done quite a few of these out of this hands-on history, so I am not going to be showing you everything we've done, but this is what the box looks like, and I will show you inside. 
So these are the ones we did not get to. Um, I think we have about half of them left. Like I said, we did half a year. So you'll see like there's a chariot we did not get to. This was just some paper. Um, there was a laurel wreath for when we studied Greece, a dragon puppet for when we're studying China. Um, this was a Greek vase. So there was quite a bit. Um, it comes with literally everything that you need to study. So the ones we did complete here, um, we did the yurt when we were doing the houses around the world. Um, we also did the clay cylinder seal when we were studying like the ancient writings. We did the Senate board game, which was a game from ancient Greece. We did the Trojan horse. And when we were doing the archaeologist stick for clues, we did the archaeology kit. So we had quite a bit of hands-on stuff in this. But what was so nice is that it wasn't like a hands-on thing every day. It was um, very optional and you got to schedule it in whenever you wanted. So it'd be like week six might be a good time to do this project. And so just every few weeks, there would be one of these projects from hands-on history. So moving right along, we also did this I purchased from Sunlight. It was an optional add-in. It is not scheduled, but it correlates to this curriculum. And it was just famous figures of ancient times. So they're just these cutouts. And you use just like little brads to connect them together. You can do the ones you color or just the ones you cut out. For my daughter in second grade, we just did the cutouts. But it has information about the different people that you would cover and you just like again it wasn't scheduled but when it was time like when we would read about somebody like for instance Narmer when we were studying Kufu, when we ancient were studying Egypt, Greece we did not ancient these, Greece and as we just these read are the little pharaohs. snippet as we came across learning about them in our other history books and then we would make the little people so it's really simple and easy to use and great for honestly all elementary school I felt like the other piece which I mentioned was this map. Um, this does come with the curriculum. And so in any time it would reference, and I was I mentioned it in another video, it would be like, go to D3 or something like along those lines or wherever. It would give you these references and they would say like map one and they would give you coordinates. That's what I was talking about. And so you would use this map. And so we actually used probably this one the most because we learned so much about Egypt and we did um, so much like biblical history. So we used this one probably the most. Um, and then we would map this on our large, we have like a huge map that comes with sunlight and we would map that in there. So this is my daughter's actual binder from second grade. And I'm not going to go through all of it because we didn't use just sunlight. But the main thing I did have her do that correlated well is this ancient civilizations notebook. Um, she made this. It's an Evan Moore history pockets book. And so we did this whole section, which was like, what is history? And she would do like... Right here, it had the words to know. So that was her vocabulary words. More what is history. Um, the next one was all about ancient Mesopotamia. More words to know. Um, so all of these things would just be like little pockets. That's a ziggurat, like the Tower of Babel. Um, she did, this was sailing on a river. Sometimes there would be just, that's, had a little boat you could sail along that river sometimes there would be um a little more like i put the packets of information she read in here as well from the history pockets and this one was egypt and it was had a crocodile with our little map of the nile river so i think that's yeah that was the whole book she made for her second grade. And there's a lot more in here, but the only other thing in here that I had from mainly from sunlight was this um, archeologist field journal, which came with the archeology span kit where she was like finding stuff in dirt and made a little necklace. But this little like field journal was with that as well. So the very last portion of that HBL 
is the stack of read alouds I have here. And I'm just gonna go through and tell you the ones we did. Um, and I show, shared in another video how that looked that you would have a guide to read those with. So I'm just gonna kind of go through the stack and tell you the ones that we covered for doing. We did half of the year and it was HBLB. So these are the ones. Mr. Popper's Penguins um, by Florence and Richard Atwater. And this was actually a dupe bug. We read this one before um, just for fun. And then, so we already had this one on the shelf actually. But we did that one. Owls in the Family. This was a new one to us by Farley Mowat. And it is now a favorite. <laughs> the House on Walenska Street by Charlotte Herman. The Year of Miss Agnes by Kirkpatrick Hill. This one is another tearjerker that we really, really loved. Um, Charlotte's Web. This was a repeat as well. And my, uh, we've read this one like two times in the past. So my husband actually read this one to my daughter this time. And the same with Homer Price. Like we've read this one multiple times and my husband's actually working through reading this one with her now um even though we're not doing the curriculum right now because we never got to it when it was scheduled last year because i was actually reading her i think peter pan or something um because i chose sometimes if there was a duplicate i just read something else and then he read those ones with her another at another time just because it was an experience they could do together um so those are the read alouds that were scheduled and we really loved this one so so far out of what we read the Year of Miss Agnes and Owls in the Family were probably our top books, and it may just be because they were both new to us. So that is HBLB in a nutshell in our review, and there really wasn't anything that we didn't like out of it. Um, as far as the history Bible literature portion of our sunlight last year, it was probably one of our favorite homeschool years ever. So... Um, yeah, it was great. So I hope that was helpful for you. Um, if you're interested in sunlight, if you wanted to see a little bit more of how that looked, I hope that helps you to kind of get a feel for that and to understand what that would look like using it every day. Um, so if you are interested in hearing about more sunlight curriculum, don't forget to hit like and subscribe because I will be digging a little more into that or just literature-based curriculum in general. Um, and ding the bell. Thank you.